but we're in the company of uh, Joe Gallagher and Paul Butler. Paul Butler due to fight again, and we're looking forward to that date, uh, May the 11th, when Paul returns to the ring, Roberto Jimenez of the Dominican Republic for the IBO Bantamweight Championship in Paul's backyard at Ellesmere Port, where he is very, very popular, and it will be a sellout of that, there is no doubt. Joe, that night, you're a man wearing a variety of hats because you train the man, but you promote the fight. You promote the bill. Is that right? Yeah, that's a dust off the promoter's hat and uh, get that out again. Yeah, so um, M22 Promotions uh, are staging the event and uh, it's got to be a good night. We've got a good undercard lined up for it as well. Great to be um, headlining with Paul. And uh, yeah, it's good. I'm not saying I'm here to take over the Eddie Hearns or the Frank Warrens, but like I say, small hall boxing and there's a lot of good fighters out there that don't get the opportunities in them events. And sure. it's good so to be able to have that license to go, Joe, what, we've got to go and do yeah. this ourselves and then get Paul uh, a seat at the table of the big so boys. So it's a towel and a spit bucket when it comes to Paul and then the Prada suit later on when you're strutting about the place. <laughs> no, there's no Prada suit or there's none of them pyjamas that you get off Canelo neither. So uh, there's, there's none of that. Well done. No, it sounds good. Sounds good. In the longer term, is that the direction you want to go in? Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to. Obviously, busy at the moment with a good stable of fighters and also managing them as well. But promoting is something that I've always wanted to do. I don't know how it'd go down. I don't think I've, I've got a face for that, like um, Eddie Hearn and that. They're just naturals out it behind a, a TV camera. I'm more of a face, face for, ra yeah, face for radio. That's why I'm here. Simon. <laughs> <laughs> is, there's nothing that this Jim. man Butler can do, though, I believe, is there, in the world of sport? No, listen, he, he plays football to a good standard. He manages a football team. He's a good snooker. He's around the pool holes hustling with money. And uh, yeah, he's one of them sport billies at school that you just think, oh my God, wish he'd just go away. He can do everything. <laughs> uh, Spencer, are you looking forward to uh, Joe's fighter, Lawrence Coley? Going into action next month, Lucas Rosansky. We've spoken about this before, of course. Bridger weight. Mm. Joe, what is Bridger weight? What is this? WBC Bridger weight title. I think the WBA are uh, invested into the bridge weight now. Bridge weight's a division from 14-4 to 16 stone um, that they brought in. So for Lawrence to step into the heavyweights, and we know the small heavyweights out there like Joseph Parker, Deontay Wilder, that most probably could challenge for a bridge weight. It's a chance for Lawrence to become a, a two-weight world champion and have one foot in the in the heavyweight division, stay in the bridge weight division. Really, that weight division was brought in at that weight, but really the division that needed to be brought in was between the light heavyweight and cruiserweight, which was 12-7 to 14-4. Really, the needs of division at 13 stone 5, whether you call it light cruiserweight, whatever. That's too much of a big jump. I have a few fighters in the past that made light heavyweight, 12-7, but then to go up to 14-4, you're fighting men then that are boiling down from 15 and a half stone, and I think boxing if there was a space for uh, a weight division it'd be in that division there between 12 7 and 14 4 that's a big jump and right. a big gap I, right. I, th I think that they will do that actually like Bridger Walker by the way is a boy that got attacked by a dog and he said oh, he, he saved his sister was getting attacked by a dog and the WBC president Mauricio um, Suleiman come in and he and that's how he invented the weight that's how the, that's how the name come about Bridger Walker was a boy that saved his sister from a dog and they, they invented the, the weight Bridger weight wow. it was named after him it yeah. could be Jordan weight you could save me from some attack outside the news building. Maybe not. Uh, so wait, you had a few questions about this, Simon. Did you not? This bridge away? No, I didn't have and questions. A, and about it. I, no, now. I questioned Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, and I was, you know, obviously I was underwhelmed with his last two performances. I was underwhelmed his performance against Chris Billum Smith, and I was underwhelmed in the fight that he had before that, before he went in against Chris Billum Smith. I think you were in the same space, weren't you, Spence? Yeah, I was. And we were speaking to Lawrence the other day um, about this step into bridge away, because it was always assumed, Joe. That Lawrence was going to end up in the heavyweight division, and what was this step? Because I don't, with all due respect, I know it's got WBC strap, but I, I worry about the WBC. They hand out straps to Francis Ngannou if they could for turning up. So I worry about their, their what their thinking is. But for Lawrence now, Lawrence was talking about the rebuilding of himself and rebuilding his confidence and rebuilding the direction of travel for him. Where is Lawrence in 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 in? Everything you said, I acknowledge, I took on board. And also for me as well to take on Lawrence because people go, you're taking Lawrence for? He was hugging away this time, that time. And while we came around, last year, December, when I was in Saudi at the Mike Tyson gym, Joseph Parker was getting ready for Deontay Wilder. They asked Lawrence to do some sparring. I did Lawrence's corner for him. And I was thinking, Lawrence is doing all right here with Joseph Parker. That finished. And then he came and see me January, February. He said, he's talking about fighting again. Can you do something with me? So I said to myself, I can but you've got to come to Moss Side, Champs Camp in Manchester. Very much like the Rocky films, you go back to Apollo mm -hmm. Creed's gym. And I just want to see, did you have that grit and that fire? 
take you back out your comfort zones. He's there in Dubai, life's good, he's made it. And he has, he's been over here now for a good few weeks, he's training hard, sparring hard. And his mentality, and he knows going to Poland, he just can't turn up and go, yeah, 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 and all that. He knows he's got to go over there. And I keep referring to him being like a Marvin Hagler, go over there, do the job, destruct and destroy, and make a statement. And it's, as you said there, touching and changing his mindset and his work ethic and his uh, around hungry fighters, where I don't know what he was doing beforehand or whatever mm. else, but it's just that mindset and going in there and being away from everyone. And this week he started snapping, I call it snapping, where I just thought his mindset's changing now. And he said to one of the lads in the gym, I hated the gym coming out the other day. I hated all of you. And I went, brilliant. I want you to hate mm. us all. That's the mindset change. And come fight week <laughs> in six, seven weeks, I want you to be the most horrible person to be around because you know how, what it's done to get here. Do you know what I mean? And uh, he spied yesterday. And, and he's in a good place. And all that, that negativity, we need to put that to bed, that like hugging Lawrence. and everything I, I else. I like Lawrence. I really He's like Lawrence and kid. I want him to be successful because the thing we were talking about was the bankability of Lawrence Akoli mm -hmm. now and I suppose what he was saying was is if, and he wasn't looking past um, the Polish fighter, but he was saying if I win this world title, I'm a, I'm, I'm, from a marketability point of view, I'm a two-weight world title holder which then comes with bankability doesn't it I think I think it's a great move from Lawrence Coley not jumping up to him absolutely yeah. because I think that he was he outgrown cruiserweight you could see that because there was a fra fragile look around him when he was boxing he's so big for the weight and the bridge of weight for me I think is a perfect step because jumping up to heavyweight they are that 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 much bigger Lawrence would be too small for those guys so the bridge of weight was was the perfect move for him and to get the opportunity to fight for a world title why not and become a two-weight world champion I think he will end up as a heavyweight maybe at the end back end of his career but right now I think that the punch resistance seems to have gone when he boxed last time against Chris Billum Smith. We see that there was a fragile sort of look around him, and that's down to making weight. When you make weight, you know, you don't hold that punch resistance, it's just not there. And I think that was the problem for Lawrence Acoli, and that was why maybe it's so negative and holding and whatnot. I think mm. the bridge of weight, as you said, I've seen him sparring at heavyweights before Lawrence Acoli. I've seen him sparring Anthony Joshua and whatnot, and he holds his own, he does well. Because he's like he's not down at fighting weight, you know he, right. he has to drop right. a lot of weight. So it, it I think you're going to see someone a lot better. For, for then, Joe. Yo, listen, we're really excited in the gymnasium. He had a bit of a media day yesterday with a boxer. They were in the gym and I think a few of them were impressed. But listen, all talk and all that, at the end of the day, he's got to go and do the result and get the win on the night. There's no point doing this and he's looking good. He's got to go and do it. And that's the mindset. And uh, less talk and more action. And uh, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say I'm more of a sergeant major with him, but I am to, to an extent on the track last night. And there's just no room, no respite. He's got to box at a higher tempo than he's ever boxed before. He's got to throw more explosive punches than he's ever done before. He's fighting a kid that's had 15 fights, 15 wins, 14 knockouts, destroyed Ale Babich within one round, and he's never been past four rounds. So if you think we can go over there and become a nice, nice and lazy and lackadaisy, then we've got to get knocked out early on. We've got to go out there for the knockout, and if it happens in round one or round 12, that's how he's got to be in the mentality. We're not there for points, we're there to knock out, and that's the mentality of the whole I've camp. I've got this image in my mind, Paul, about what it's like for you fighters in the gym, especially someone like him about it, and, and snapping, and, the, and this kind of uh, emotion that you guys go through. Can you relate to what you're saying? I'm sure Spencer can. 100%. Um, Joe pushes you to, see, to your limit where you do feel like snapping. But I think he's just pushing you and pushing you and pushing you just to see how much he can get out of you. Um, and I remember that. I remember my first first day in there um, and I'd been out the gym for six weeks and I was on bar bag. And I was on, I think it was my fourth or fifth round and he's shouting, one bounce, one bounce, get over, come on. And it took Beefy to say, come on, Joe, he's been at Hideout Festival for the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> for him to go, oh, all right. Um, yeah. But he, he, you, you've, you've, got, you've got to be pushed. And with Lawrence, Lawrence said, I think it was the first week he was in, he said, he, he turned to the lads and said, he's heartless. He's just heartless, but mm. that's him pushing you. I think you've when, got to be pushed out your comfort zone. Yeah, when, get you the best. when you get in those penultimate rounds, when you get 9, 10, 11, 12, and you've left no stone unturned, yeah. and it becomes a psychological battle mm -hmm. as opposed to the physicalities, Joe knows that his fighter's there and he's got it in him, so he knows that he can push him on. If the kid's yeah. you know, cheating on his running or he's yeah. not working as hard, yeah. what do you do when you get into those later rounds and you go, this is a situation where a kid could go out and get injured or you know that he's got it in the tank and he's no, no it's there. So I totally understand that mentality. Of you, 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 but uh, the, the point of it as well, you've got to know where the quit threshold is on yeah. them, where the quit is in them, where the quit is in it. 
and in a fight, you when you're going to, as I call it, go to when I'm going to war, all right, I'm going to back them 100 percent, and they have to back me. But I'm not going to go to war with someone who's quitting six rounds, who's looking for a way out at eight rounds, doing bad baggers going and this and looking for water shoelace undone I'm trying to see where the threshold is where the quit throw can they go through that when it digs deep down at hard fight have they got in them mm. or they just got to back down from it and that's what I'm looking for because there's no point going to war with someone that you already know has got one arm missing before you go into it do you understand they just don't have that heart and yeah. the design that dig down that one where's this quit threshold there's no quitting Paul Paul but no, yeah, that, 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 that's somehow one. I thought that what about yeah. Cooley well, a Coley at the moment, he hasn't showed it up to now in training. He's working hard. He's been to snap at a few of the people that I have working with me on Marcus Morrison and that. And uh, he's snapping at them and it's like, good, I want him to snap at it. The, the, I need to know how to press your buttons. Once I've pressed your buttons, you then have to be in control out of being out of control. And that's what the idea of a training camp is for. And that's what I look for them physically and mentally and tactically for a fight.